Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. Are you excited about the E3 on Sunday? I surely am. But do you know what Bethesda is going to announce regarding Fallout 76? I'm about to provide you 13 points that you will most likely discuss. Hey guys, welcome back. So E3 is happening this Sunday. I'm very excited. But what's going to happen really? Well, to start with, we know that Starfield and the Elder Scrolls 6 is not really going to be present. Todd Horrid has announced it last month that they're not going to talk about these two games that are being developed right now by Bethesda. What we have confirmed officially so far is that the upcoming Doom Eternal and Wolfenstein Youngblood will be the main focus of their conference. However, we know as a matter of fact that Rage 2 and Fallout 76 will have their DLCs coming very soon, which kind of means that we will have to talk about it, if you know what I mean. Anyway, I have been digging in the past few days, and the press especially, to try and find relevant points about the upcoming DLC Nuclear Winter as well as features and anything in particular that Bethesda is probably going to talk in E3 and I managed to find 13 points. That's quite decent, I would say. So I hope you guys enjoyed the information I got for you. It took me a while, but I think it was really worth it. So let's start with the first point. Player feedback and of course the Wild Appalachia DLC review or overview is going to be one of the first things Bethesda is going to bring up in a tree in my opinion because honestly they have already done it in one of their latest Inside the Vault articles they broke up some numbers showing things that people have done in the Wada Palacio DLC. Now they have also thanked everyone for their feedback and for sharing their thoughts on things they would like to see next and for things that they think that need improvement and so on. They are constantly thanking players for uh, being patient, for supporting uh, the game and for providing feedback. So I'm pretty sure they're going to bring it back. Also, they have recently shared some opinions with PC Gamer about the player base. And they didn't really state a specific number, but they said that the numbers are quite healthy and that some or many players that were not really playing anymore came back to check out the Wild Appalachia DLC which is really great. They have also said that they are spot on on communities, on forums, on feedback, and they really care for what players think. As such, I really think they will bring this up during their conference. After all, players are essential without us. What would Fallout 76 be, really? Supposedly, I mean, they threw so many bugs and issues at us since the release and many people have endured and support the game and are still playing, so no wonder they keep thanking us for everything. Another topic that I really think is going to make it to E3 this year is about Todd Howard and his recently controversial interview with GameSpot. So he basically told them that Bethesda and himself knew that Fallout 76 would launch poorly. They were aware of the bugs, of all the issues and... Also, because they were making a somewhat different game, a multiplayer RPG game that is different from everything they had made until date. So they were never aiming for great critics. They were never expecting the best reviews and acceptance from the audience. But still, how can you charge people for a full finished game 
and then release something that is filled with bugs, is almost unplayable, it's like in a beta state, and then make uh, excuses or defend your position by saying it's not really about the launch, it's about what it becomes. Now, that really is true, but if you want to launch something that is real, even if you manage to fix the game, which by the way, they did really well over time, Fallout 76 is really not the same game as it was in November last year, but what it is now, you know, it has been many, many months and we paid ahead of time for a finished product that was nowhere near finished and now we get these statements that are very polemic and controversial and about every gaming media I checked have discussed and talked about this. That's why I think Todd and Bethesda will also bring it up in E3. Did you know that Fallout 76 is coming to Steam later this year? Yes, that's true, and it's an information that has been out there for some months now. Bethesda has announced this through their Twitter later in March, and they pretty much said that many of their new games are going to be on Steam, including 76. Now, that is really no surprise for us, because many other older games are in Steam for ages, such as the old Fallout games, as well as the entire... Uh, Elder Scrolls a franchise, including the online game, as well as other Wolfenstein, Doom games, you know, there's a lot of Bethesda games there already, so why wouldn't they include their new releases as well? Yesterday, Bethesda has released a new Inside the Vault news that introduced combat improvements and changes that are coming later in this month. That's great news for us. Now, we are not sure if these are part of the nuclear winter. I don't think they are, but they pretty much tell us what they're going to do. They're going to add a new system where you can see the exact uh, damage that you do through numbers. They're also going to make holstering a bit easier and quicker. Then they're going to improve the scope vision with, I think, every weapon out there that has a scope or aim uh, to see the enemies closer and then they are also going to make retreat easier when you are firing a ranged weapon. That's some big change for the combat system and I'm pretty sure they're going to talk about it during E3 as well. Now, this point is something that Bethesda has not really announced yet, but due to a data leak, we are now aware that they are developing a sort of arena battle royale mode, and the lore will basically be about Sax, a supercomputer, who will take over Vault 51 command. And to select a new overseer, players will have to fight each other over and over to climb the ladder. And the more wins you get, the more rewards you will get as well. And you will be able to further access the vault. I have selected a few voice leaks that pretty much exemplify what I'm trying to say. So check it out. I'm sure you're going to understand the entire concept behind this new mode. Please enjoy your time in Vault 51. It may be your only chance. A battle to the death is the only sure way to judge the superior candidate. Data suggests attacking the first person you see as an expression of dominance. Perhaps you are the next overseer. As they say, stranger things have happened. Your perseverance in the last test has been noted. Now go out and do it again. I would not attempt to make friends. Data shows it will be used against you. Now, I'm not entirely sure that Bethesda wanted to bring this up just yet, but because of this huge leak, now everyone is aware that this is a fact and it's going to happen. I think Bethesda will come forward in E3 and talk about it, at least give us some more details to confirm what we already know. 
vote 94 and 96 have been long announced that it will become some sort of high level raids or dungeons and I think it will be something like the most recent Arcus Pharma and Project Paradise where you need to team up with other people to actually get things done and have a chance at getting the best rewards from the event. Now, I expect them to give us some more details because this is something that is well known for a long while and because we are all waiting for more raids, more things to do, more challenges and especially more bosses because the ones in game are not so much of a challenge anymore, especially if 10 people gather up, then, you know, for example, the queen goes down in two minutes if you have people with a lot of gear hitting it no stop. And that's why I think they will talk about this in E3 this year in a few days. This point is very obvious and predictable. Well, Nuclear Winter DLC is going to be mostly about Nuclear Winter, the new mode, who would tell? So yes, Nuclear Winter is a mode or a feature. I think it will be something like survival mode, you know, the servers where you just jump in and you can't fast travel anywhere and it's basically kill or get killed. So Nuclear Winter will also have a new mode called the same as the DLC, but we don't know anything else at all. I have been searching and I couldn't really find any details about how will things work. I suspect that it will be some sort of permanent nuclear uh, blasted area server where you're always taking epic amounts of radiation but I could be entirely wrong, we will have to wait and see what Bethesda has to say about his new mode. Another topic that I think it's too difficult for Bethesda to stay away is the fact that the main questline is going to suffer some major changes, especially because we are introducing a new DLC and the new lore for the game. So in here, in this Bethesda article, they have announced that there will be major changes to the main questline with Wastelanders. I'm not sure if they are going to change any of the previous missions. I don't think that would make much sense, but I think instead the main lore is going to take a new turn. A lot of things are going to happen and some of them are probably not what we think or not what people have been trying to guess and predict. Hopefully they will launch some sort of teaser in E3 to give us a hint of what's about to happen in Fallout 76. Point 9 is about a new feature, Legendary Mode, which is something I was not really aware until I did this research. And it's basically some sort of prestige system where you can start over with your character to become even stronger, or as Bethesda said, to acquire stronger abilities. Now that's an interesting concept, and I'm not sure exactly how are they going to make that happen. It's probably some sort of park rank up system i suppose but this is really no news for us just like the new and upcoming dungeons in vault 94 and 96 so it wouldn't surprise me at all if they came forward to give us some more details about this long announced feature This point is a bit unlikely that they will discuss it much further than what they have already done in PC Gamer, but basically some Bethesda developers have hinted that they might collaborate or introduce the Creation Club, which have been making mods for Fallout 4 and Fallout 3 in the past, and they have been really successful and keeping players engaged over time. It would be a really positive surprise if Bethesda came up with this in E3, but I don't think they will. It's just a possibility right there, but don't get your hopes too high. 
The forgotten world items decor for the camp, where are they? They were announced with the Wild Appalachia DLC and then they were delayed because, but as I said, they weren't ready to be alive. But I haven't really heard about this topic for, I think, a month or something alike. I tried to search and I couldn't really find the patch notes where they said that the feature was nowhere. Uh, ready to be launched. I remember reading that somewhere in one of the articles, but I was not able to find it to show you guys. Anyway, I haven't heard about this for a while, and I think they will bring it up very soon, for the mere fact that it has been in development for a long while now, and it should actually be in-game. So don't get surprised if they bring it up in E3. I found something very interesting in PC Gamer, again in an interview with Bethesda developers for Fallout 76, where they mentioned that the community is very friendly and we highly value interaction with other players. Now that's really true from my experience as well, and it wouldn't surprise me that Bethesda actually brings up some new social or interactive features for everyone since they have been listening to people's feedback a lot lately. Something like a text chat would be probably very much appreciated by the community. It's something that has been requested and discussed over Reddit and other social media ways. So that's just a hint from my part, but I'm pretty sure they have other things in mind right now. Moving on to the last point that I think Bethesda will most likely discuss in E3 is about the recent duplication scandal in Fallout 76. Now, if you are not really aware of this issue, which you should, by the way, in the most recent patches, several different duplication glitches have emerged and it affected the economy of the game drastically. For instance, items that were quite rare before are now ordinary because they have been duplicated. Also, prices have changed a lot, especially for certain weapons like bloodied and also serums for mutations. Even cosmetics like the Fashnach masks are now quite cheap and accessible for everyone to get. Anyhow, I haven't really heard about Bataza fixing these glitches or punishing people who have been abusing the system but, as a matter of fact, they have done that before when the first duplication glitches emerged. So I'm confident that they will bring a solution very, very soon. So maybe at E3 they will introduce a solution that will put an end to this issue at once and for all. And that's everything I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed the content. It took me a while to figure all these things out, but you know, I like to be informed and I like to keep you guys informed as well. What do you think about these points? Do you think I'm wrong? Do you think I'm right? Do let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you have any other suggestions or points that you think Bethesda is going to talk during E3, I would like to know that as well. Anyway, if you are new to the channel and you would like to support me, then make sure to hit that subscribe button below to help my channel grow. Thank you in advantage. And if you would like to support me even further, then make sure to check my Patreon page. That's going to be everything. Thank you so much for watching until this point, and I will see you very soon in the next video. Adios! Bye-bye!